Hello farmers, thank you for tuning in to yet another informative edition of your program. This is Agricultural New Directions Agribusiness in support of Vision 2030, where we talk of business fundamentals in the agricultural fraternity of Zimbabwe. Now you would find that speaking of being an upper middle class economy by year 2030, there are various projects that our Zimbabwean farmers can take advantage of so that they improve their livelihoods, they repay their debts, and are able to facilitate way for their children to go to school and even their healthcare facilities are, are will be taken care of if we take these projects seriously. Speaking of these projects, today we are going to be looking at commercial broiler chicken production here in Zimbabwe. And we are going to be talking to a youthful farmer, the entrepreneur behind this uh, enterprise, behind this project, Wenselas Nyamfukuza. Wenselas, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be with you today. I must say that it is a pleasure so much for us when he has invited us all the way from Harare to come here at Great Dyke Enterprises just before Mapinga to come and do this episode and educate our Zimbabwean farmers in terms of the possibilities mm -hmm. that are there in broiler chicken management. That's actually excellent. It's something that is very inspiring to see that people are really interested in learning how we have achieved such numbers even though we are still going beyond this. Okay. There is actually much more that we can still do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now once I last a brief background of this <coughs> enterprise. You are a youthful farmer, you mm -hmm. are young and you are running this big enterprise before we talk of numbers. Yeah. Because I can tell the audience there at home that this is not just one fowl run. We have several housings. We have this one and three more, but we've just decided to sit in this one. Exactly. What's the last? A brief introduction, synopsis of this enterprise. What motivated you or inspired you to get into commercial broiler chicken production? So one of the most essential things when we are talking about business, it's about the money that is attached. But in as far as there is the money, we also need to understand what can give me cash within the shortest period of time. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about when you look at the investment appraisal, you talk about the cash payback period. Mm -hmm. And with the broilers, you notice that it's just five weeks. In fact, it's 35 or 32 days. And this is where we are now putting them to our butcheries in town. We've got about six of them. But the motivation behind this is looking at the, the return on time invested versus the return on money invested. You notice oh, okay. that from a single, uh, for, a, for us to be able to raise a single broiler, we are going to use uh, at most $3.50 to raise a single boiler from the start and we're going to, re to realize profits of more than dollar 95 sometimes two dollars per a single chicken so it's something that is very very inspiring so the more the, the more the numbers that you put the more the cash that you get in return so as someone who always who was of course raised on a business uh, background uh was I can say I was born an entrepreneur because okay. I started my first business when I was grade seven, when I was doing hangers and so forth. Oh, okay. But when I, to then jump into the business of agriculture, this is um, 2015 after completing my A-level. Okay. And uh, that's when the farm was also purchased. And we realized that I wanted to do business. So I actually checked where is the money in farming. And I realized that, okay, the money in farming in as far as people are saying agriculture is rising, uh, the future billionaires or millionaires are going from farming, it's not something that is very, very simple, unless you understand where exactly is the money in farming. And when it comes to the business of chickens, broilers will always play the top list. Okay. And it, it might not actually require, it's actually a no-brainer to say ch broilers or layers, because we are talking about five weeks, you are converting uh this uh, small chick day old chick into up to six dollars sometimes mm -hmm. even eight dollars because we do not just sell uh, live beds we actually okay. slaughter do all the value chain we have it all until it reaches to the final consumer okay. so the motivation behind the broilers is actually the return per dollar invested as well as the return per time invested a lot of people usually focus on the return per dollar invested they forgot the time oh, time is very very essential when it comes to agriculture you actually understand that even when you are doing uh, other projects how much time are you going to spend doing that it's a it's a sim similar scenario where you notice that someone may actually say i, I want to go to probably uh, south africa or zambia someone might consider using bus and you use your probably eight or nine hours. Someone might just want to fly and just 
just in 45 or one hour, 45 minutes, you are already there. So the one who has been there already is going to have more time to do other things. So right now we are able to do up to eight batches of these 20,000 okay. per year. Now, when the last you spoke yeah. of a pertinent issue mm -hmm. where you spoke of money or of time, rather, being your biggest asset mm -hmm. when it comes to the life of being an entrepreneur or just life in general, time is your biggest asset. That's and I would like us to talk, uh, maybe dive deeper into the conversation. Mm -hmm. Speaking of this enterprise as an <clears throat> investment, for starters, how many beds do you have in this house? Or mm -hmm. uh, how many beds does uh, one house maybe... Uh, the, can accommodate the current capacity first. Then, secondly, I also want to talk about this as an investment. Uh, is it a long term investment? Let us talk about the capital injections. It's infrastructure. Okay. I can see treated poles in here, I can see these hay bales properly are combed and well placed. I can talk of the chickens themselves. I can talk of those, uh, the coal that we are seeing used to warm your chickens. Can we talk about this enterprise as an investment? Is it long term? Is it short term? the capital injections, the economic muscle in terms of undertaking this project. That's actually excellent. The greatest investment that you definitely need to have is knowledge. I'm talking about the knowledge from the technical side of things. How does it take, what does it take to raise a chick from day one to day uh, whatever, which is normally 35 if you are someone who is like us, who supply directly to our it's channels. Really Okay. Unlike the ordinary ways, where people normally when you see someone doing 40 or something, those thousands, they usually go using the, the contractors. Okay. But in this particular case, the amount of investment required uh, is something that is, of course, not very simple. You notice that for, up, for us to be able to do a structure like this one, which is capable of carrying up to 14,000, you need approximately 16 to 24,000 United States dollars. To raise only to do only the structure. Okay. To do these uh, feeders and drinkers, you need up to twelve thousand. Okay. For how many beds? This is for ten thousand. Okay. I'm talking about for the ten thousand structure. Okay. So meaning to say, for this twenty thousand, you would need twenty. You need twenty-four thousand. Okay. The feeders only and the drinkers. Okay. Then for you to be able to do uh, the charcoal, you need about four hundred fifty bags of charcoal, and each bag you're going to buy it at eight dollars per bag. Okay. So you can actually see that the upper we are still talking about the initial investment. Yes. Then when it comes to the feeders, each and every bed is supposed to eat at least uh, an average of uh, 125 grams per day. But until it is done, until it is from day one to day 35, you to maturity, exactly it is going to consume up to 2.5 mm. kgs or 1.5 depending on the feed conversion efficiency of what you are doing as well as the feed conversion rate. Okay. Then going on to the now the level of investment, you notice that the investment is actually a long term investment. We are, as you can see right now, I'm also preparing for my retirement. But when you invest in these chickens, you also then invest those returns in other businesses like the beef production. Oh. Where you are now knowing that if you reach up to 2,000 average levels of uh, beef head you now have got a million dollars oh. if you are also maybe 850 that's up to again a million so depending on the quality of the beef so this is a cash flow project that is going to build our capital base okay Together. thank you so much yeah. there you had it viewers we are talking of investment in greater chicken management we're going to go on a short commercial break we'll be right back with this and more in the second segment stay tuned Welcome back viewers, we are here in the second segment of your program, Agriculture on New Directions, Agribusiness and Support of Vision 2030. And today we are looking at commercial broiler chicken production. We have to get the liberty of inviting Wenselas Nyamfukuza, he is a youthful farmer who is undertaking this project. Now viewers, we encourage you to be a part of these conversations. Feel free to get in touch with the producer Wazanai Manyore, it's on 0772 
Alternatively, you can like our Facebook page at the Business Report and I. Leave your comments and suggestions on our YouTube channel. They are very welcome to us. It's uh, Agribusiness with Earth and I. We are also now available on Twitter, where most of these discussions take place. It's at Agribusiness 110. Now, earlier on, before into the break, when Sanderson last, last year was telling us of the investment, what does it take to invest in commercial broiler chicken production? When Sister and last, we are in the <coughs> second segment. Thank you for joining us. Thank you once again. I'm very excited to be sharing with you on the production part of it. Yes. Can you maybe take us through um, uh, at the management side? You'll mm -hmm. find that in Zimbabwe, most of our farmers are well acquainted with the knowledge of producing these broilers. But how are you making it? As those uh, I would want to refer to you as the elite in broiler <laughs> chickens production. You are yeah. a youth, but yeah. you are taking care of a 20,000 bed flock. What are those key fundamentals yeah. that are making you successful in this enterprise? Yes, we uh, understand that there is uh, the essential things, things like the management. When I talk about the management, I'm talking, about, of course, about the vaccinations. When it comes to more than 1,000 chicks, you definitely need to understand that the vaccinations are the proper management, which is, of course, understood by a lot. But the, here is where a lot miss it. Mm -hmm. Most of the farmers who are doing the, these chicks uh, do not understand the value chain of this one. Mm -hmm. So you notice that someone produces his or her chicks and after producing maybe 500 or 1,000 or 2,000, they start crying for there is no market. Mm -hmm. But uh, why have you jumped into this business if you mm -hmm. do not know how is the market going to do for you? Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, of course, start with who is going to buy, probably. Mm -hmm. It's something that has been understood over time in memory. A lot of people have been saying, let's do market research, let's do this, but only a few understood how to do it. In most cases, you notice that if you do not have the market, why can't you create it? Okay. So you have to create the market. That is why you see right right now we've got six butcheries. One of the whole, we've got one of the whole butcheries. We've got the storage, the cold storage system, mm -hmm. which allows you to store up to these ten thousand beds, cold dressed, and that's a game changer because we are able to store up to even six months, even if the people do not, the customers do not buy. And we also focus on targeting the big uh, fish. Okay. So if you are then someone who is venturing to that, you could actually say, I'm going to have, I'm going to open a restaurant where I'm going to have my 3,000 chickens and I'm going to deliver this to my restaurant. Okay. But the elites normally focus on securing and locking the market. Okay. They're actually the monopolies of the market. Mm -hmm. So this is something that you need to understand, the value chain, the chain of your product. Your business should create an ecosystem. Okay. Who is going to supply the chicks? I don't know how many farmers would understand what we call a business model canvas, mm -hmm. which talks to the everything that happens in your business, from a model of who is, who is your partners, mm -hmm. the customers who are within your circle. And all of, all of those things. So if you understand those things, you'll be able to produce a dancing star of your product. Yes. So the first thing is to understand, have the knowledge, in-depth knowledge of the whole value chain of your business. Can we talk about maybe uh, as a value chain mm -hmm. in terms of the viability, mm -hmm. in terms of the economic sense, mm -hmm. is it viable for you to be purchasing seed or you are mixing it yourself here? The first thing is, it's not always viable to buy feed from okay. the commercial side, the other producers. In as far as their feed is good, but we realize that what they're actually doing, besides that I'm also an animal scientist, I understand animal nutrition, so I understand what it takes to raise, to change, to, to balance the bone to meat ratio oh, of this small okay. chick. From the day old, where the chick is actually a yolk, where it is feeding from the yolk, until it is now at this stage. Mm -hmm. From a stage at which it is not able to, uh, to provide heat for itself until it is now. This is actually 12, uh, day 12 of okay. these chicks. So you notice that we have got uh, a mini processing plant for our feeds. And as you can see, like I was talking about, we need to create an ecosystem for our business. This, um, this chicken litter that you are seeing is going to be used again to feed our beef cattle. Oh. So nothing is going to waste here. Okay. So when you, the same chicks, uh, the same uh, the same chicken litter that we are having, we are using it to feed the, ch the, the the beef cattle. 
But again, in return, we are also going to use uh, the, the soya that we also do. We also farm soya here and we process it. We've got the roasting machines. We've got the extruding machines where we then extract the oil and the soya cake. Uh, the soya cake which we then mix with other ingredients, things like micro, uh, vitamin micro, micro pack with other essential, not only vitamin but other essential nutrients. Yes, yes. And again we are going to put maize crush, maize bran and so forth. Okay. Then ultimately we are able to then feed these ones because ultimately up to, this is from uh, scientific research and um, uh, on average, uh, 70 to 80 percent of the costs are coming from feeds. So imagine you are buying the feed, you are reducing with up to 40% of the costs. And that 40% you are going to use it for your feed, for your animals. And by the, by the way, by virtue of then taking this uh, chicken litter or matoto to feed our beef, we are also reducing our cost of feed to the beef section. Oh, okay. So it's actually a game changer. That's why we have got an integration. So ultimately, if all these things are working together, it's very... <laughs> that was very really detailed when Sesa Lass. Obviously, we are catching Master Chigeo. On that note, viewers, when Sesa yeah. Lass here was telling us on how he has created a sufficient ecosystem yeah. in his boiler chickens management. We are going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the third and final segment. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to you. We are here in the third and final segment of your program, Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness in Support of Vision 2030. And today we are looking at commercial broiler production. We have taken the liberty of inviting with Zeselas Nyamfukuza. He's going to be taking us through the nitty gritties and even the challenges that he's encountering in this enterprise. Wensi, welcome back. Thank you so much. Uh, it's actually a good thing to be with you again. Okay. <laughs> now we are going to be looking at the challenges in uh, broiler chicken production at this level. Can you take us through maybe the challenges and mm -hmm. how you are working mm -hmm. to ensure that you are keeping the risks and uncertainties that come with broiler chicken management or production? That's actually excellent. I like the fact that uh, not all what glitters is gold, mm -hmm. but for you to be able to get to the gold, they are very, very uh, challenging times that you get. Sometimes you can hit 50 meters down the ground and get zero. Mm -hmm. The same also applied when we started. We started this 2015 with 8,000 chickens. And 8,000 chickens, 2,500 uh, died. So we actually sold up to 5,000. The 5,000 that we sold were twice so not even knowing what is actually going wrong. And one of the most challenging effects is that we were blank in terms of knowledge. I personally didn't know what is actually going wrong. Managing the ventilation was very poor. Managing the feed conversion efficiency. You notice that people do not understand what is called feed conversion efficiency. Yes. Feed conversion rate. Yes. Some would say, I want my feed conversion rate to be high. But feed conversion rate could be higher. But if you are checking, you will see that we don't have um, feed yakara scrapers. Yes. Feed yakara scrapers, you cannot calculate. You can't know feed conversion. You can't judge the feed but you have had a loss. Then that's one of, that was one of the biggest challenges with a mortality of up to 12.5%. And what is the expected or the normal mortality? The normal is actually supposed to be 5%. Oh, okay. And we were at double plus two and a half from there. But right now you'll be surprised we are now hitting at most 2.8 and sometimes 3% oh, okay. in terms of mortality. Uniformity. The Zakchikura like this, some were big, some were very, very small, and some with the a lot of challenges like helicopter wings and so forth. And as someone who was blank, it was something like we because we had that what I was talking about the entrepreneurial prowess, you know, I don't give up. I went to the training, they taught us how to raise a proper brela chick. Okay. And I can assure you that from understanding generally, if you even if you are to look at the cleanliness of the water that we yes. have. It's actually something that you can actually drink. So that is one of the key essential things. Number one, to then understand what does it take to raise a broiler chick. Not only a testimony, but also testing the money. You get it? <laughs> so it's something that was very inspiring. Then there are other challenges like the diseases. Vaccination sometimes can go wrong. 
you might want to understand that how does your water contain. Does it have chlorine and where you then need uh, chlorine binders like Afi Blue? Those are some of the things. Then there are other diseases like ascites that can actually wipe majority of these chicks. Other diseases like um, Newcastle where you can actually walk the whole flock getting zero. But let me also bring back to what we uh, encountered here. At one point we said we can now do 15,000. But guess what? It was now a challenge on the feed. We ended up feeding maize bran only. Ooh. And again, we, we lost on our weights. We lost on the uniformity. We lost a lot of things. So those are some of the key generally, but they are a lot. Now, as soon as yeah. we round off this segment, we are heading towards uh, closing this as uh, a very informative edition. Yeah. I would also want you to talk to us in terms of your employees. How many employees do you employ to take care of these 20,000 mm -hmm. uh, broiler chicken flock? And in terms <coughs> of skills, do you train them? You are talking to a company who is training. Mm -hmm. Do you also train them? Or what do you, I mean, how do you undertake this project in terms All of right. working with your employees, the human resources, a capital side? Okay, so you understand that uh, human resource is what matters in our business. Mm -hmm. Whether it's, in fact, it's the strongest asset that we have. So you notice that the, they define the quality of what you produce. Mm -hmm. So here we've got 12 people. Six of them work during the day, mm -hmm. six during the night. This is basically because we are doing the man manual way. If we are to look at some of the clients that we work with, sometimes we can actually, two people can actually manage this war two people only okay. but again the most essential thing is to train them and allow them to understand what does it mean to say we have fed we don't allow them to say we have fed 10 bags mm -hmm. we want them to talk numbers we've fed two kgs per bed so far mm -hmm. today we've fed them 560 grams today our daily weight gain is actually uh, 60 grams and we've increased in this way. They talk those numbers. It was one that uh, we didn't have much time to give them. But if you would just get one in random, they will tell you all those. And you'll be surprised that most, some of them are not even the actually grade 7 people. But they understand the nitty gritties. They can tell you that that chick has got ascites from afar. They can tell you that that chick probably has got uh, this other... Ch we've got a lot of challenges that we have. Some of them might be... Uh, very serious, some of them might be minor. They can actually tell you that we need to vaccinate, uh, we need to control this way. So in terms of managing the employees, we ensure that people are really motivated. Okay. We ensure that we give them bonus production. <laughs> exactly, we also do. In as far as we sometimes have those challenges, at some point you can... Yes. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but we also to make sure that we've got some securities that oh, actually okay. ensure that. But in being a business, those people can actually be part of the syndicate that also still. Oh, okay. So you always, of course, have to keep an ego's eye on your project. Yes. But uh, having said that, uh, we also need to make sure that we've done our part in terms of ensuring that the people who are doing are well in the in the project are well taken care of. And you are sharing the same vision with them. Exactly. That's Thank some, you that's so much. Well, see, it was a pleasure having you with us today, <sighs> educating us in terms of broiler chicken management at a commercial level. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm sure uh, our viewers, you were taking notes and you did understand some of the fundamentals that come with investing in this type of a project. Because you find that in some instances, people end up having their broiler chicken fluctuating in weight. Pamuyambo Simba, Pamuyambo Wonder, when Zia was telling us that at one point, they had to feed their chicken straight maize. Ufuchayo, chayo. Nekulu doko kutuanga waitama cash flow challenges in terms of buying their feed to feed their chicks. From me, your host was Zanae Manyore. I'm also on Instagram. It's a W Manyore. And the crew behind the scenes. Have yourselves a fabulous evening. Thank you for watching.